Hey everyone, Gilles here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now last year I shot an after movie for a Belgian artist who I went on tour with. And I used a specific effect to introduce all of the band members. Now let me show it to you real quick. Now this is an effect that a lot of movies and series use in their intros or in trailers. And they actually made this in Adobe After Effects. But I did get some questions from people asking if this is possible in Premiere Pro. And well, it is, but it's a little bit more limited. So let's make a simplified version of this awesome effect in Premiere. First we need some shots of course. Now I took the liberty of taking shots from my colleagues Janik and Lorenzo. And of course a shot of myself. Now these shots can be quite boring, where the characters are looking into the camera, or you can take shots where the subject is doing an action. Like for instance this shot right here where I'm dancing. Now once we've got our shots, let's take them into Premiere Pro. BAM! Here they are right in my timeline. Now first we're going to trim our shots and then I'm going to scroll to the point where I want the clip to freeze. Now there are two ways to get a freeze frame out of this clip. The first way is to duplicate it on layer 2 by holding ALT while dragging. And then right clicking on it, selecting add frame hold. And you can then delete the part in front of your playhead because everything behind it will be the freeze frame. Now the other method is by making a screen grab. And you can do this by going to the program monitor and clicking on this little icon right here. Now if you don't see this icon then go to the plus icon and drag it into the program monitor. Now when you've clicked on this give it a name, select the type, I'm going for a PNG and then select import into project before hitting OK. Bam! Here we now have a PNG in our project panel of that specific frame. Now the next step can be done either in Premiere Pro or in Photoshop, but it depends on the software that you have available. Now I'm going to use Premiere just to keep things basic. What we're going to do is mask out the subject. Now try to be as accurate as possible with this and take your time. Once that's done, nest the layer by right clicking on it and selecting nest. Okay, so the next part is completely customizable to your likings, but I'll give you some inspiration. First off is the background. Do you want to use the original background or do you want to go for like a color map? I'm going to use a color map. So in the project panel, I click on the new item icon, select color map, Pick a color, like maybe blue for instance, and then I'm placing that beneath the nest. But to give a bit more depth, I'm going to apply the ramp effect to it. Now I'll set the start color to white and the end color to black. The ramp shape to radial ramp, and then I adjust the start and the end of the ramp, so the ramp is in the middle of the frame, behind my subject. Then I will blend it with the original for an amount of around 50%. This is already really cool. Now, if you don't want this, then you can use other effects to stylize your background, of course, or you can use this, but play around with the opacity and blending modes. Okay, next is the nested layer. So I'm going to apply the transform effect, set a keyframe for the scale and the position in the beginning of the clip, and I'll do the exact same at the end. Now, once I'm at the end, I'm going back five frames, and here I will scale my clip just a tiny bit, maybe 110%. And I'll adjust the position as well. And then I'm going to uncheck this box right here and give it a shutter angle of 180 degrees to give it some motion blur. And finally I'm going to ease the first and second keyframes. And I'm keeping the last ones linear. Now the next step is adding extra elements like for instance a text with the name of the character. And once again we can do this with the transform effect. Making it fly in from either side of the screen. Now don't forget to set the shutter angle to 180 degrees to get that motion blur. And we can even animate other elements and place them behind our nested clip. And to make it even more awesome, I went on Starblocks, which is an online library full of stock clips. And here I got some assets like overlays and some awesome particles like embers, flares, leaves and so much more. And here's my final result. Now I mentioned in the beginning of this video that my version for the artist's after movie was created with Adobe After Effects. And if you're not really familiar with that software, then have a look at our awesome beginner tutorial on Skillshare. It covers all of the basics of After Effects and trust me, even I watched it and I'll even learn a lot of new things from it. So definitely check it out by clicking the link below. I'll see you guys next week and as always, stay creative.